Hey, this is Jim McDonald. What you're looking at is some of the guts of what makes the PowerCast run. I just thought I might throw it up there if somebody's interested. I can actually do a full video on our current equipment at some point in the future. Hey, this is Jim McDonald. Welcome to episode 108 of the PowerCast. This episode is George Lehman. Um, you on YouTube requested him probably more than anyone has been requested. Uh, that doesn't mean that we can always give you what you're looking for, but we can try if it makes sense, and this time it totally worked. Uh, George got into his family background, his, his training philosophy, his uh, plans for the future, his weight loss, all of that, all that stuff. This is kind of the third of uh, three very personal episodes about very different topics. Um, we're lightening it up next week. Next week is both Mike Rashid and Omar Isaf, who had not met before we started the show. So uh, just briefly before we started the show. We had a great time. It's also a little bit deep too. Um, we think I'll enjoy that one as well. Uh, remember our sponsors, please. Uh, ThePowerMagazine.com, CavemanCoffeeCo.com, ShopCompex.com, uh, Rogue Fitness at ThePowerCast.com slash Rogue. We're going to do something a little different this week with HowMuchYouBench.net. You'll have a chance to win a pair of gangster wraps. Uh, totally free. And it's pretty easy. You can even request to have them signed by all of us, which we will definitely do. Uh, here's how you have to do it. One, follow the podcast on Instagram. That's at Mark Bell's Powercast. All one word because that's how Instagram works. Two, whatever episode you are currently watching or listening to, whether it's this one or if you're catching up or whatever, at the moment that you thought, hey, I need to remember to, to uh, enter this contest, Take a screenshot on your phone or take a picture uh, of you're watching it on TV or however you're consuming this, this show. Uh, post that to Instagram. Tag the PowerCast. Uh, bonus points if you heavily recommend the show to your friends. And this is going to run through September 8th and we'll get back to the winners. Uh, that's free gangster raps, your choice, uh, such a deal. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, likes shares, all that stuff, that all that YouTube stuff, please do that stuff. We definitely appreciate that. And now on episode 108. Recorded live at Super Training Gym in West Sacramento, California. How much were these monsters? The do I get any change? In the West. I'll this fucking kill you. Is Mark Bell's Power Cast. Hey now. Sponsored by howmuchyoubench.net, thepowermagazine.com cavemancoffeeco.com and Compex Muscle Stim products at shopcompex.com Alongside Silent Mike and Jim McDee Hey, that's me! Here's your host, oh my God. Mark Bell Hey now Hey now I want to give a shout out to Rogue Fitness for uh, jumping in and sponsoring the podcast along with our other sponsors we got Caveman Coffee and we also got Compax jumping on board as well. It's uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've been working on this shit for a long time, so it's good to have some support. If you go to thepowercast.com slash rogue, that will take you to our affiliate link, and when you buy things, that will directly impact this program. Hey now. What's up, Silent Mike? Just living the dream. What are you doing over there? Sipping on a monster. Today's my anniversary. You didn't even bring me a present. Uh, our anniversary or your anniversary? I guess it's mine. Oh. Me and Andy. Oh. Oh, she's you've been cheating on me. <laughs> I know. She's sort of in the way of yeah. you know, of us. It's pretty rude. Oh, what's her face? <laughs> oh, what's her face back home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never bring her around the gym. I just assumed that yeah. she was out of the picture. Yeah, I know. They I think she stays away on purpose. That's like know. when you don't see uh, any pictures on Instagram with <laughs> with the other, with the significant <laughs> other. You're like, oh, they must, yeah. <laughs> they must have either uh, realized that yeah. it doesn't help them get more subscribers or they fucking pushed them off Chick a cliff. Chicks are smart. They post a picture of their boyfriend. Boom. 5,000 followers. Gone. Yep. Yeah. Gone. Especially if your boyfriend looks like our guest. Oh, my gone. God. They know they get their asses whooped. The Slayer. <laughs> the Slayer. The Slayer of babies. Uh, <laughs> there was a guy on my uh, Facebook who posted a picture, actually a series of pictures of his wife because he found out like yesterday or the day before that she's been working as an escort without him knowing. This is someone you know? 
somebody on my Facebook. Yeah. Escorting them to where? Yeah, <laughs> to to uh, the happy ending. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to publicly shame her. So, mm. ow. Yeah. A little hey social now. media explosion there. Damn, I hope my life never takes turns like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like very well could. All the fucking perverted shit you're doing all the time. I'm gross, but like uh, somebody told me. Austin Baumgarten, our, <laughs> our wise gym member, told me, he's like, Mike, I think you're my only friend that's not a criminal. <laughs> 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 what? So, are we chopped liver? Are he told yeah, me yeah. that yesterday. That's great. Yeah. No, I was like, I'd like to think of myself as not a criminal. Yeah, he Mark. also uh, <laughs> told us a, a top secret uh, thing about uh, blowjobs. This is for our seven lady listeners out there. Obviously, it's not top secret anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how Austin uh, obtained this information, but he's I thought He's very it was smart. He's a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Smart, smart dude. He must have given it a lot of thought, or maybe he's had some practice himself. I don't know. Probably a little bit of both. But uh, he said attitude over technique, ladies. Attitude over technique when attitude giving a blowy. over technique. That's not bad advice. No. I, I do think technique's important. I mean, you could put that into, like, deadlifting, and you say attitude over technique, and it'll get you to a certain extent. Deadlift with your eyes closed and your mouth open? Yeah. Yeah, it's similar, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> coddle the balls. But yeah. eventually you're going to get injured, and I think that's the same case with a blowjob. Not that I know from experience. You can get injured? I mean, if it's all attitude, you might get poked in the mm. eye. You might fucking rip something off. Sex injuries are no joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wings and sex don't mix. I remember here. I wouldn't know, but I remember yeah, hearing buffalo sex. Buffalo wings? Oh, hot sauce. Yeah, it doesn't I, work. I've heard that story. I don't think yeah. girls, <laughs> you know, this may be sexist or whatever, but girls just can't eat wings. They, it, lo- it looks gross. Yeah. You know, guys can do it, and it's we not are a good, gross. It's not a good first date. Uh, oh, thing, that's it's for the sure. worst. <laughs> The worst. But, but what about that Carl's Jr. commercial from a few years ago with that we really talked, hot no. chick? Oh, yeah. We talked a lot about this. That's the hottest thing. Our son watches that shit on repeat. <laughs> 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 yeah, Jake's watching How great is it long. when you're fucking 14, anything's jerk-off oh material? Anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. It could be fat girl fucking laundry. Things used to be so intense. Anything. Now now you can't you can't find uh, enough stimulation. You're jerking off to the Today show cuz <laughs> one brunette's okay looking. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Now now we're fucked. Speaking of that Carl's Jr. commercials on Just Kidding News with uh Bart Kwan and uh, Mr. Bart Kwan. There was a uh, the topic was there's a study that said that uh sex does not sell uh that things that get too raunchy uh take you uh, elsewhere, so like that Carl's Jr. commercial we discussed, it makes sense. Like you're, you're eat, you're seeing this hot ass, hot ass chick eating this delicious burger. You're not thinking about the burger at all. Yeah, you're distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want tits afterwards. Yeah, you don't want the burger. What do you think about that, at Baby Slayer? You know, probably about right. <laughs> 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 I've never really thought it through. I always thought sex sold pretty good, but I've never sold it. You know what I mean? So. Mm. Now. now you're lying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know what you do for your side job, buddy. <laughs> I big I biceps. Online, day. online coaching. <laughs> 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 We're here today with uh, Baby Slayer George Lehman, uh, the uh, owner of the biggest deadlift in the history of America, with a 909 pound deadlift uh, done with a hook grip. He was cheating. He used a hook grip and he used the belt. Mm. And single, I believe. And I heard rumors that he used chalk as well. Oh, yeah, just a little bit of yeah. chalk. Like, I didn't take it too cheaters. Yeah. Your uh, moral values are just going right down the toilet with all that chalk. Yeah. But we're, f- we're fired up to have him here. We got a lot of things to uh, get to the bottom of with him today and uh, had him hit up some deadlifts yesterday. He did a 775 or 765. Let's go with 75. All right. We'll say 75. <laughs> <laughs> there were seven lows and 55-pound yeah. plates. Things got wild. Internet says 775. Yeah. Internet says 775. That must be true. Is that what it was? No, okay. it was 765. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it for... Uh, Strong and honest. What a catch. Oh, my God. What a catch. <laughs> and he did, it for, uh, he did it for 10 reps, and it was pretty goddamn intense to watch. That's 10 pretty reps, you pieces of shit. I don't yeah. know if you're hearing us. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I know. I know how many people deadlift over 750 for one rep. Who who people who does sets of 10? I know. Almost no one, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, you should see me trying to get people to try doing that kind of shit. They're like, ah, I've heard differently. Singles. singles <laughs> I'm not trying doubles. to tone. Yeah, exactly. Before we get into uh, in too deep to some other cool shit, um, how do you plan for stuff like that? Is that sort of uh, – I know yesterday was a little random, but uh, in general, do you kind of say, okay, well – you know, I would like to hit a 900-pound deadlift, so I'm going to do, you know, higher reps further away from uh, competition, or, you know, how do you plan it out? Well, I mean, I think most uh, powerlifters do the same thing. They start off lighter, work up heavier over time. I go a little higher rep than most people. I think largely just because I can lift more weight than most people, 
So even when I do higher reps, it's still very heavy and it's still pretty dangerous. I'll do, I cheat on rows and stuff. I use my lower back. But, um, Cheating on everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cheating son of a bitch. <laughs> Straps too. <laughs> um, but like I'll do like 20 with like 500 pounds or something. So Shit. like I don't like to go 550 and 585 on rows. You know what I mean? It's not really that much of a reason to. Um, but mostly I'll, I'll just start off light. Um, a lot of volume, more frequency, and then the frequency will go down, the volume will go down, the weights will go up. And um, usually it takes like six to eight weeks. You deadlift multiple times a week? No. Just one, once? Once a week, if that, honestly. Um, sometimes is that, by, is that more by feel than anything else? It could be eight days, could be ten days? Yes. Um, I used to deadlift like every fourth day and stuff like that okay. when I was younger and do that kind of thing. Frequencies varied a lot. But one of the things that I've been trying to you know, pay attention to is what other successful people do that are you know, lifting what I do or more. And typically, you know, they'll take an extra day off if they need to. You know right. I mean, like you won't see them like rush stuff and hurt themselves, you know. Yeah. So I started doing that a little bit, going um, heavy and then light and heavy and then light, taking eight days off instead of six or something like that. And um, it kept me injury free more so. Um, yeah, when you're when you're using the big weights like that, I mean, there's there's no way around. Uh, you have to be at least somewhat cautious. You know, it's it was pretty cool to watch. Um, you know, I've seen you lift before. You came to the backyard meet of the century a few years ago. Um, but, you know, it's been a little while since I've seen you lift up close. And, I, I, you know, at that particular meet, there was so much going on. I didn't have a chance to really hone in and watch your form and stuff like that. But watching you, uh, you know, watching you compete that day and then also watching a lot of your YouTube videos more recently and then watching you uh, up close yesterday was really fucking impressive because, you know, you, you watch a video and you can only get so much from a video. And uh, seeing you pull 900 pounds for four reps and shit like that is uh, completely mind-boggling. But... When you watch the video, you just see like, all right, well, the guy just got fired up and he just, he's really explosive and he's just kind of yanking on the bar and he's just going for it. But there's a lot more going on to it than, than that. How long did it take you uh, to develop that technique? Um, well, I'd like to think it's gotten slightly better over time. You know what I mean? It's probably, it's at its best right now. Um, but phew, around uh, nine years of yeah. like effort, you know what I mean, I, uh, I've gradually uh, gotten better. I was probably pretty good with um, form and stuff by like 17. So probably three years into training before I had things like kind of right. dialed in a little bit. But um, I can't take credit for a lot of that stuff because really I, I learned from watching other people, you know, uh, Ed Cohen and Eric Lillybridge and, um, you know, other people like that. Right. Um, and you also, uh, you know, you um, you tend to lower the weight um, under control, which uh, you don't really hear a lot of people talk about that. And you see, like, especially uh, from the CrossFit community, they'll kind of drop the weights at the top. I know you, like, drop that last one at the top. Mm. Who cares? It's the last rep or whatever. But um, is the eccentric portion of the deadlift important? You know, it seems to build a lot of muscle, right? Um, and I'm trying to get my deadlifting muscles bigger. So um, I would say yes. Uh, I also feel like it helps keep me injury-free. Um, to some degree, because if you go from relax to, I mean, I used the example with you yesterday. If you were to just, like, let the weight fall on your chest just about right. and benching, like, you probably wouldn't build a lot of muscle, and it'd probably be a lot more dangerous to just, right. like, even if you caught it on your chest with, like, a rack or something, you know what I mean? It'd still be pretty pretty something. So I, uh, I like to control it just to build muscle, stay a little bit more injury-free. Um, I can stay more upright when I'm lowering it, like, under yeah. control. And if I lower control, the bar stays bent. So I'm missing like that much of the bottom or something like that. Right. Again, cheaterish, you know, uh, <laughs> chalk straps. Have you ever uh, done deficit pulls to kind of, uh, you know, balance that out a little bit? Yeah. Um, I really like deficit deadlifts. The only problem I have with them is is it does change form quite a bit. Right. Um, I use them more to uh, like build muscle and strength and stuff than I do just to particularly train the deadlift. Kind of like an assistance exercise. Yeah. We'll do a little lighter. Very much so. Like it's, it's quite similar, but it's not the same thing. You know what I mean, because uh, I notice um, I have people do a lot of deficit deadlifts, and even in my experience, it takes a couple weeks of getting used to regular deadlifts again right. before it even feels good, because yeah. you're used to pulling in such a low position that you now have strength in that lower position, but not necessarily in that regular position right. that you've been pulling from, so it kind of throws people off. Yeah, your hips are just in a different spot. Yeah, pretty much. More leg drive and stuff. Let's get to the juicy stuff. Um, where did the name Baby Slayer come from? What is that about? Um, well, it came from a forum uh, originally, at least that's why you guys know about it, uh, bodybuilding.com when I was like 15 or something like that, I, I went on there. When did you start lifting? 14th birthday on okay. the dot. Uh, had to be 14 to train at the YMCA. Right. So as soon as I was 14, I went and trained at the YMCA. That's cool. How, how, how big were you then? You're, uh, you're what, 6'4"? 6'3", a six, little under 6'3", six, six, three, three, actually. 6'3", 340? 345 walking around kind of thing. And uh, how big were you then when you were 14? 
You know, I was pretty big. I was uh, like 6'1", like 215 or something, but I could bench 105 for one. And I had uh, what I like to call like um, like cookie cookie dough arms, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like a tube of no bicep whatsoever. Making me fucking hungry. <laughs> that sounds like Fat Dan's arm, cookie dough. <laughs> I remember uh, flexing, and just nothing would happen. It just looked exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> that's isn't that impressive when you flex and it doesn't your arm doesn't get any bigger at yeah, all. Yeah, can't uh, flex dough. I started off pretty bad. You'd never think I had um, like good genetics or anything like that. 105 right. bench. All of my friends could do that or more. Right. 135 or something. You know what I mean? We're not talking about me being a 10. We're talking like 14 years old. You right. know? Were you playing any sports at the time, football or anything? Nope. Never got into sports. Um, I always kind of felt like, uh, well, especially when you're like a kid, you know, it's different if you're like in the NFL, people take it seriously, but people just didn't take it super seriously. And I, I always wanted to be good at whatever it was that I actually cared about. Yeah. And so I didn't really like team sports. And I'm also from Florida. So <laughs> after school, you could go and run around in the heat if you wanted. You Are know? you uh would you say you're a little bit uh, introverted, maybe? Oh, extremely. And especially when you were younger, before you built up, a, you know, uh, strength and a body, maybe you didn't have as much confidence? You know, now I'm about 300% better, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It's ridiculous now compared to what I used to be. But I'm um, growing up, like, extremely so. No one is at, like, five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah. At some point, though, you start, yeah. like, you go, to, you go to school and stuff, and you realize that, like, I don't know, you start to take other people's opinion of you as... Right as what you are you know yeah what do you think that was you oh think it, man were you fat uh, were you shy i, mean, I got a i got fat i got fat at like 10 started getting fat and um then mike's I, gonna cry mike's fat <laughs> yeah and, i was a little tubby <laughs> and then I, I switched schools at the same time which as you know like assuming if you go from like fourth grade to fifth grade to a different school it's yeah. kind of messed up because everyone knows each other yeah and somewhere in there yeah i just wasn't like the cool kid anymore like right. i remember i was like in my other school dragon ball z everyone was like we'll draw pictures and it'll be cool <laughs> yeah. and this school everyone's like pokemon or something like i don't know shit about that. <laughs> 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 gotta study up to be yeah. cool so i um i wasn't like super popular and that just kind of like stuck with me because that's that age that you start to like realize who you are and like where you stand in the right. world and stuff. Um, I was never really aware that you could, uh, you know, really work on yourself and change who you are. Right. Because it's, you know, you always look at other people and you're like, you just kind of are who you are. There's a popular person, the loser person, or whatever. You know what right. I mean? Uh, I always thought I was uh, kind of shitty. So I never, um, I was never outgoing, never um, anything like that. Always very introverted. Um, and early on, pretty, uh, pretty defensive, even. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, see those people that like start fights or something. Uh, when I was like 10 to 11, I got in like a lot of trouble and shit because of that. You know mm. what I mean? Just because I, I didn't get along that well with people because right. I didn't know how. You know what I mean? And, Fights um, and stuff and just getting in trouble with teachers and just not paying attention in school type of thing or what? When I was uh, when I first went to sixth grade, I'd been a loser in fifth grade. And, and um, <laughs> oh, my brother told me, he's like, man, in middle school, like everything's so much cooler. You can like get in trouble and stuff and it's cool. So I was like, older go. brother? Yeah. I'm going to go be cool in middle school. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first thing I did, I like, got in trouble and everyone was like, you're super cool. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> What's and up then, now, um, bitches? Uh -huh. Stole some milk. Yeah, Fuck and, you, uh, Pokemon. <laughs> and I, I took that a little bit far because um, I think that year I got kicked out of school about 25 times. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they you want to be like, really hey, the fucking whole, like, cool. Getting in yeah. trouble thing, you. Yeah, and you that, can't kill people. And, like that's that, not what we're talking about. That really kind of screwed me over a little bit because if you, I literally twenty five times, you had three to five days at a time, kind of thing. Right. And um, so I ended up failing sixth grade, and I hate failure. Like I really hate right. failure. And all that did was, you know, more failure, kind of thing. Right. And that didn't help at all. You know what I mean? Because I was already a big kid, so for me to um, be held back a grade and stuff didn't uh, didn't help matters. And um, then the next year, um, I essentially did the same thing. I ended up, uh, because I, w I kept getting arrested and kicked out of school and stuff, the next year I got expelled from school. I couldn't go back to any school because um, I actually, <laughs> I brought, I think I had weed in school, I think is what it was. Uh, right. I started uh, smoking when I was really young and um, I, I couldn't go back to school at all. So that That's was a good way to be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smoking pot. Uh, it wasn't then, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> no one else did that. Um, so I, I failed uh, again. Um, just from not going primarily, wouldn't let me hey, go. Hey, Marcus, can you uh, get the fan point on Baby Slayer? Oh, yeah, sweating. <laughs> He's heating always. up. <laughs> Sorry and, about that. Uh, Where do you get weed when you're in the fifth grade? Yeah, in Florida. You you get it from people that are in prison now. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, literally, uh, <laughs> they got locked up. You can't sell weed to an 11 year old. I know that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Like, at the time, I was like, these are just the coolest adults yeah, ever. Yeah. You're like, Uncle Joe was fucked. <laughs> 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 what an asshole. But, um,. <laughs> <laughs> and that only made stuff worse because, you know, like messing up in school on top of being fat, on top of not having friends, on top of getting arrested and getting in trouble and stuff. It's just it all equaled out to like uh, feeling like less than everyone else. You know what yeah. I mean? In insignificant, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
How were you uh, in school itself when you were there? It wasn't a, a study problem or like Mark. What Mark's dyslexic and oh, I have. I'm um, yeah, I have a really really hard time. I'm sitting still and doing one thing for a long Some period of time. ADD or what? Um, ADHD yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. man. They yeah. told me I didn't have it, but like. Yeah. I'm so He's happy we're standing because yeah. I want to pace. You yeah. know what I mean? Born in the wrong century. Yeah, it's something. I should be doing something else. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I had a, a hard time paying attention. And the other thing was is I didn't like when the teachers would uh, like act like I was stupid if I didn't understand something. So I wouldn't want to ask. Right. Because like, I don't want someone to call me out in the middle of class and stuff no. like you're an idiot. That's essentially what they would do. Yeah. I would love to see them now. A few of them would do that. I'd love to see them nowadays and be like, you're a terrible teacher. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know yeah, how yeah, you yeah. should be now. Like, you're just, you're just terrible at that. Yeah. Um, so I, I wasn't um, – things that I care about I can obsess on and really do well with. You know what I mean? But if I don't care and it seems insignificant and I don't want to learn it, I have like an incredibly hard time. I'm not one of those people that can um, – learn something I'm not at all interested in. I'd have a very hard time learning a language if I didn't really want to speak yeah, it. You know right. what I mean? Like, it'd be pretty much impossible. I just wouldn't. Wouldn't do it, yeah. Uh, so, Baby Slayer, where'd it come from? Baby Slayer. <laughs> We're still um, there. Uh, well, as I, um, as I, uh, you know, I, I mentioned I got in trouble in school and stuff. It was right after my little brother had died. Um, I don't know how many people actually watch my videos on here. I had some siblings die. The last one was my little brother. Um, he died, I, was, I think you mentioned yesterday yeah, you said he died at 10 years old. Yeah, I was about 10. You, oh, you were 10. Yeah, he was, um, he was a baby. He was oh, like okay. two or something okay. like that. Um, and uh, he had had cancer for a little while. And I was a very religious family. My grandfather was a minister, mm -hmm. and my father was a minister's son. And my mom is excessively religious, you know right. what I mean, like one of those kind of things. And I was of the belief that, you know, if you pray and stuff, if you're a good person, you essentially get what God intends. Right. I was like, well, God is good. <laughs> you right, know what right. I mean? yeah. uh, my parents have already lost two children. It's not even possible for them to lose a third one, right? So um, when he did eventually pass away, um, there was a lot of, um, a lot of blame uh, like, towards like, myself, uh, simply because... Like, from, from yourself? From myself. Yeah, yeah okay. no, no, no one would ever blame who, right. who could. You know what I mean? right, You'd right. be sick. Right. But um, I just, I don't know. Like, if you'd think that you could affect the outcome on something like that. Right. Because I, I grew up in a very, very small religion that was very, it's Christian, a form of Christianity, where we didn't, we were like kind of different. It's a little more strict than other people. I, I never had a birthday until I was 20. No Christmas, no Halloween, no, nothing like that. I never did anything on Saturdays because technically. I, that religion sounds like it sucks. Count well, me out. It's, it's rough, <laughs> man. Trust me. Yeah, sounds tough. And um, so I was like, oh, we're, you know, I was told we're this special religion. We're these special people, the chosen ones, the right. whatever. So I'm like, of course God's going to listen to us. Everyone else is like pagan and doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we're like the only special people, of right. course, right? <laughs> right. But it um, didn't work out that way. So um, I guess that's where it came from. I, I blame myself quite a bit. Um, not like, uh, not publicly, not outwardly, but always like, it was just kind of in the back of my head. Like if I could have yeah. done better, if I would have prayed more yeah. right. or taken church more seriously, like actually listened to it when I was there kind of thing. I think it's pretty common when somebody dies, uh, especially from, you know, like, I guess you'd say natural causes, you know, people, uh, you know, people are like, well, why the fuck am I still alive? Yeah, everybody mm -hmm. wants an explanation. You know, what's, too, what's you know? my point of living? Why couldn't the other person live? Well, I think a lot of people feel that. Even if it's unnatural causes, uh. We've talked about death a little bit on the podcast. But like, a lot. Yeah, a you, lot of fucking people die. Yeah. You just try to find a reason. Mm -hmm. and, and often that reason turns into guilt quick. Yeah. yeah you know, right. whatever it is, oh, I should have been there. I could have been this. I could have done that. Or he should have been with me or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's no, just, it felt that way at the <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like, I should have done better. I should have right. cared more. I should have right. prayed more. You know, whatever it is. Because, yeah. well, you know, all things are possible in God, right? Like, why not? Right. So, I don't know. That's, that's where it came from. Um, I never really meant to explain it to anyone. I just went with baby slayers. I'm like, <laughs> whatever. Cool name, I guess, right? But I, I always um, I always thought about my little brother when I would lift. You know what I mean? Right. It was always, for years, it was always when I'd lift, like, if I could do this, I could get him back kind of thing, which to some people, you know, silly or whatever. But um, to me, um, it helped me deal with, like, a lot of those um, issues and stuff. Because for a long time, it was, even now, it's, it's very upsetting to think about and, yeah, and to focus course. on and stuff. Yeah, but so, watching your lift yesterday and, and watching some of the YouTube videos, I think what people get attached to with you is, uh, people watch it and they're like, man, that's a crazy motherfucker. Like, he's he's deadlifting these huge weights. He's deadlifting 800 pounds. He gets to the top of the uh, top of the top of the rep, and then you think, okay, the guy's probably just going to drop the weight, and that'll be the end of the set. But then you continue to go on for four, five, six, seven reps, and sometimes you'll even stop at the top again and just breathe and just keep going. And it's like, what the fuck is this guy made out of? And I think that's what people have been so excited and so motivated. 
uh, and inspired about with you. And then asking you about it yesterday, uh, you kind of talked about, you know, you're kind of thinking like, you, I guess you said you've asked people before. Maybe you can just talk about it. You asked people before the question of, you know, if, could, mm. if they could bring someone back with one more rep. Yeah, you know, I, I train a lot of people and stuff, and, you know, they'll come to me and they'll be like, well, this week I got one extra rep or I, you know, did a rep less than I wanted kind of thing. Right. I'm like, well, let me ask you, could you have done it if, you know, you it was for your mother or your girlfriend or your brother yeah. or whatever? And it's always like, of course. I've never had a single person be like, nope, I gave it my all. <laughs> no. You know, they're always like, well, of course. Like, that would be totally different. And my thought process is if you can do it, why didn't you do it? Like, why, why would you even, you know, say to me, you couldn't do it? Just like, <laughs> right. It's, it's not an issue of training or, or diet even or whatever. It's just uh, an issue of effort. Um, so I always try and uh, find the strongest reason I would have to move a weight. Right. And that way I can get the most out of myself kind of thing. Um, and that just seems to be the, the strongest motivation I have. Yeah. You know, I, I don't really have any other... Uh, any other situations like that one that affect me as much? Yeah, I think we're all looking for stuff to draw upon sometimes. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, sometimes people just draw upon something um, completely in, in a different direction. could be something positive that they saw. Maybe somebody's inspired by uh, Michael Jordan or um, Muhammad Ali or whoever, you know, somebody somebody they, they consider to be great. Or maybe they're inspired by something really shitty that happened to them that they... Uh, have a hard time getting over. I never understand how people who've never had anything bad happen to them get motivated about anything or <laughs> understand anybody else's yeah. troubles, you know, honestly. That's that's true, man. I've had a lot of people that are like, I don't have anything bad in my life, like, ever. Like, what do I what do? I, do? That's like, I, I, like, I don't know, man. Just, <laughs> just, just wait. Like, just yeah. wait. Like, sooner yeah. or later, you'll see. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I've known people who didn't lose anybody in their family until they were in their you know, late 40s. And I, I don't get yeah. that. I mean, those of the three of us here have have all lost There's somebody. A saying from Bruce Lee it says, uh, "Those who don't know they're walking through darkness will never see the light." Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You have to. Uh, you need shit to like look forward to because yes, yeah, certain things have happened over the years that you're you're not happy about that you can't really change. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like Mark said, uh, I think uh, you have a good following and a solid uh, one of the most power. Uh, popular powerlifters because you lift crazy weights and that you're open with your your audience you talk about some deep things uh and you're pretty raw in a lot of your videos in the past uh you talk about your dad a little bit Mm -hmm. um and you talk about your family a lot how was your your relationship with your parents even though you said they're very strict and um well they they actually aren't very strict um because they did lose a lot of kids so they're like excessively easy on uh, me and my brother um, but they believed in what they did religion wise. Yeah. Like they, they were never supportive of me doing anything against the religion kind of thing. Um, my relationship with my dad is like uh, pretty incredible. Um, no one, um, I don't see him as much as I'd like just because like I stay busy. He lives close by, but I only see him maybe once a week or something. Um, probably the best person I know in general, like, uh, uh, I'm trying to give you guys an example. Well, I mean, you lose three kids, right? Which is in itself is hard. Yeah. He supported my whole family through it. Um, he supported um, you have me. Other, other siblings that are still alive? Uh, just a brother. I got okay. I got an older brother. Um, He's in some of your videos. Yeah, he's yeah, pretty so jacked. Yeah, uh, genetics, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, relationship with him is is quite good. He's a uh, probably the strongest minded like person I know. Yeah. Um, he he can put up with a lot of stuff. Uh, whenever I uh, whenever my last sibling um, died, David, um, my mom sat in the hospital with him a lot because my dad had to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was for like months, kind of thing. And um, it's pretty brutal, as you might imagine. You know what I mean? Uh, you go it's got to be. I, through, I can't. Yeah. I can't imagine. I have no idea how bad that would through, be. Go through um, like Sounds chemo awful. and stuff, and like, your body stops fighting stuff off. So my little brother got um, an infection, and it like kind of like ate into his body, kind of thing. And she had to yeah. clean it every day. Wow. Yeah, you know I mean, which is like rough. Yeah. Um, so so she kind of like broke down um, quite a bit uh, mentally. Like uh, my mom like sees and hears things that like right. aren't actually there. You know what I mean? And um, she divorced my dad. Because of it, she stopped believing they were married. And um, to see him go through all that kind of thing is, right. uh, and like keep his stuff together. So you have to remember at the time, I'm just doing terrible in school. Right. You know what I mean? Like he's watching one of his kids just fail over and over again, just like right. not to be able to accomplish anything. Um, his wife is, you know, going crazy, like quite literally. And um, he's just lost a bunch of kids and he's got to go to work and like keep everything together. You know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. it's pretty much like, um, like my mom could watch us. You know what I mean? But she's not a... Um, you know what I mean? You give her 100000 she'll go rent four places at once. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of thing. And um, so he's, uh, he's probably the, the strongest-minded person I know, um, which is why I've spoke about him in videos. Uh, yeah. A while ago, my, my parents don't believe in going to the doctor, for example. Both my grandparents died because they didn't go get treatment for stuff. Right. Religion, you know what they, I mean? They don't believe in uh, medicine and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, not really. Is what this is, uh, uh, Adventist? 
Was it? Uh, no, no. They um, uh, used to be called the Worldwide Church of God, and then they didn't really like all those added rules kind of thing. Yeah. So my grandfather had like 30 people he preached to for like 20 years or something. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, very, so very, sm- small. very small group. Very small group. And we definitely thought, or I thought we were special. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. They didn't tell me that it was a, uh, yeah. Um, Did your uh, dad uh, ever change his, um, you know, belief in, in utilizing doctors and stuff like that? Absolutely or? not. Um, okay. Never. Not, not even close. He watched both of his parents die. They lived down the street. Right. You know what I mean? Like my, my grandmother had got lung cancer, right. which takes a while and is kind of terrible. Yeah. And my grandfather had a, a stroke, which takes a while and is kind of terrible. Yeah. So um, he, uh, he got, we believe, diabetes because he wouldn't go to the doctor kind of thing. He had it for many years. And then eventually, like, uh, he got like a cut on his foot that just opened up into like a like a vicious wound kind of thing that like rotted. Yeah, like yeah. he started, his foot started to rot and um, he lost the ability to walk. He started having like shooting pains and stuff. Um, he couldn't eat anything. He couldn't, you know, it, he started turning like color. Like he started turning pale. Wow. And in my family, when people start having that kind of a problem, they just like die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. in my experience, like life is quite fragile. Right. And um, I, I fully expected him to die. I didn't expect him to actually um, like recover from it. Just, I've never seen anyone recover from anything unless <laughs> yeah. they go to the doctor. Right. And um, what ended up happening was he went from like 300 pounds at 5'10 down to like 220. And he lost the ability to walk for about six months. But one day he called me over and um, he was like standing. And then since then, um, like his toe fell off and shit like that. Like it's, I'm kind of surprised he kept his foot because yeah. it had moved like from his toe, like into his ankle, like through the whole foot. Wow. Um, but he's kind of stuck with his guns and he started eating really, really healthy and very little. And now he, he does more cardio than he's ever done. He's never used to at all. That's awesome. He's, yeah, he's recovered like fully as far as I know. And he's, uh, he's much better off for it because even though he believes you should eat healthy, God thinks you should eat healthy and take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. He didn't. You know what I mean? And I think he saw that as like a sign of what he should be doing and yeah. realized that like he is mortal. You know what I mean? Like you can't eat bad for 40 years and weigh 300 pounds at right. 5'10 without training and get right. away like with it. You, you may not believe in a doctor, but it still would, it would be uh, even less wise to smoke cigarettes yeah. if, you were, yeah, mm-hmm. if you were of that religion. You right. probably need to be almost more careful. Yeah. Make sure you're getting sleep and just even some of the basics would be important. Yep. Yep. He uh, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. Um, he's, you'll see him have a beer like every two months or something. He's, um, he's made a miraculous recovery. Um, as far as my mom, he's the best person I know. Man. I, I could never say enough good things. Never gets upset. Yeah. Well, he'll get upset over like something, but like he won't. Is that uh, one of your goals is to try to like emulate him in some way? You know, I'd love to. I'm just not good enough. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, I tell t- uh, like my girlfriend all the time, like, I wish I could be more like my dad. Yeah. Like, man, like I just like. You, like Blows your mind, huh? Yeah, just so. So incredibly reasonable, and like I see what he puts up with, yeah. and he still keeps his you know shit together. And I see what I put up with, and I'm gonna be like pissed off about it or something. And I'm like, yeah. how how parents can be so uh, like selfless is just on a whole other level of any anyone's understanding. Yeah. Sometimes you just you know yeah. I don't think you understand until you have your own kids, and and even till you had your own kids for a very long time, you don't really get it or understand it. You know. Yeah, that, that freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you ever uh, want to have kids, you think? You know, I have a, a strong fear of them, like, being sick or something. Right. You know what I mean? Or, like, passing away. I also have a strong fear of, like, my girlfriend dying, right. like, during it. Um, I, I really, uh, I would like kids. I just, I watched, like, uh, what I went through. And, like, my dad tried everything to help me. Like, he tried everything. to help. He homeschooled me at one point. That's yeah. why, like, just him. Like, he worked a regular job, too, and he would, like, sit with me and work with me. And um, I just, I don't think I could ever do the stuff he's done. Yeah. So unless my kids are a thousand times better than me, I, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have them. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. What about your uh, relationship with your brother? Are you guys pretty close? You know, we were close for a long time. Uh, we would always train together and hang out together and stuff. As we got older, um, we took kind of um, different paths, even though we, we both still work out. But, um, like, uh, uh, my brother um, developed, like, earlier than me. Like, he had a girlfriend, like, 16 I had a girlfriend like 20. Yeah, and yeah. if he had a job like 18, I'd freaking work online now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so he Still was always, trying to figure it out. Yeah. He was always like ahead of me and stuff. And so I kind of like lagged behind. He'd want to go out and party or something. And I'd be like, I'm going to stay home and like be by myself. Um, so we, uh, we grew apart. But I, I still see him uh, a few times a month. He lives pretty close by. And he's, he's actually doing really well now. Went through a period of time where he was, it was pretty rough. You know, like you were saying uh, the other day, somewhere between like, 
you know, teenager and like mid twenties yeah. is like kind of rough. You're figuring stuff out. Yeah, it's a wasteland. <laughs> oh, I don't man. know what the fuck to do. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a wasteland. Then you find plenty of fish, and it's even worse. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> I can just like message people. And, yeah, oh, there's no. a lot of bitches out there. Oh, oh my god. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> there's only seven here. Yeah. But there's a lot out there. Yeah, somewhere else. Tr- trust me, they know. Yeah, but yeah. I, I get along decently well with him. Um, just. Uh, we don't, he doesn't power lift. I can't convince him to deadlift, even though he deadlifts like 700. No, I'd be done with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can get him. Uh, he'll do anything that's ridiculous. He'll do an 800-pound high box squat in the Smith machine without training legs for six months. Wow. I'm, I'm like, stop it. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, what are you yeah, doing? That's like, so. like, like it's, you do 315, like, go deep for 10. It's, like, right. better. Like, trust me. But, you know, it's, uh, he's, he's a little bit strong-willed for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did your other siblings pass away? You know, one of them, uh, you know, Sudden infant death syndrome or something. Yeah. I'm not completely sure. Right, right. Um, that one I really don't understand. The other was a form of muscular dystrophy, the way I understand it. Mm. Um, so and everybody passed away like at a very very young age. Very young age. Yeah, like they, under they, the age of two or something. Or? Um, one of them never really got out of the hospital. They were just right. there for like a month or something because they like weren't breathing right, I believe. Mm. And the other one um, like came home was around for like a year or so. I remember him. I remember uh, my mom like. Um, is there a, is stuff. there a certain kind of hospital that you go to for? If you know, they don't believe in doctors. Well, they, they, they believe in doctors for their kids. You know what I mean? Oh, well, okay. let's, let's put it this way. They're, like, not super for it, but, like, right. they're sure as shit not going to keep it from them. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, right. like, yeah, they, they all got treatment and stuff. We went to the um, Ronald McDonald So even McDonald the one that had cancer still had treatment? Oh, just, oh of course, oh, okay, man. Yeah, okay. he went through chemotherapy and stuff, which, okay. knowing the way it worked out, I wish he didn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Some so. people choose not to. Yeah. Some um, people choose, you know, yeah. some people at certain ages just choose not to because they're either too old or too young. Sometimes they just say, fuck it. I wish my dad hadn't. Yeah. Honestly, it didn't like maybe two weeks is all the difference it made. So. Yeah. And extra suffering, you know. Yes, yeah. Sometimes. Uh, we went to the Ronald McDonald house and that was um, about as positive of an experience as you could have <laughs> right, in right. a children's hospital. Um, they do really, really well there. I like highly support them. That's cool. Um, yeah. yeah, they're, they're a, great, uh, a great organization. You always hear about different organizations like that, but uh, not a lot of people have actually dealt with it one-on-one. It's cool to hear that they're doing good. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. they help a lot because, like, the families are going through almost yeah. as much as the, the kids are and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean, if not more so, because you have right. a baby, they don't fully understand. Yeah. But the parents understand everything, and it's it's nice for them to have, like, an environment where they're, like, somewhat comfortable and, yeah. like, there's, like, food around. And, Someone's like, trying to spread some positivity. Yeah, there's, like, some, some decent stuff going on. They'll have, like, people come in dressed up as, like, Batman and stuff and see the kids. Yeah, and that's it's, cool. it's really nice. Shout yeah. out to the... Uh, um, Ronald McDonald House at IWK in Halifax, Nova Scotia, who was uh, who were helpful to us when we were hanging out there for a month when my uh, grandson Nicholas was born around Christmas cool. and very sick. Um, when how did you uh, start lifting? Like, what was the process of you uh, getting your butt into the gym? Well. Like I said, on my 14th birthday, I went to the gym, and uh, I pretty much had no idea what I was doing. But I saw other people doing stuff, so I'd like kind of mimic it, and um, it just kind of went from there. There's actually one guy, I don't know his name, but I still know him. Well, I see him around and stuff. <laughs> um, he was doing curls and skull crushers with 135, like, supersets. It was, like, the biggest guy I'd ever seen. And I was like, well, you know, if I want to be like that, like, I have to do that. Right. And uh, me and my brother both started doing that. We eventually got up to curling and skull crushing 135 for reps. Took me quite a while. Was your brother already into lifting a little bit or no? We started at the exact same time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was like, I want to go to the gym. And I'm like, yeah, it is, like, my birthday <laughs> like today. So Yeah. Um, I think actually on my birthday, what happened was, is I, he went to the gym. I stayed home with some dumbbells on a piano bench and did like <laughs> some flies. And right. the next day I went to the gym, <laughs> but technically my first day working out was my birthday. And, um, I guess I owe my brother that, uh, to some degree. Um, I had planned to start training. I had like done pushups and stuff before, uh, but I had to wait until I was 14, but you never know. Maybe I would not have, uh, have actually started it and gone through with it and stuff. If not, um, having a brother to go there and do it with me who was right. also fat. And that was inspired by Dragon Ball Z? Dragon Ball Z, um, <laughs> just, yeah, to, to quite a degree, um, but mostly I would say it's just like a natural instinct for like a young man to want to be bigger and stronger, yeah. especially if you're fat and stuff, you know what I mean? I remember being like, if I could just bench, starting off with 105 or whatever, if I could just bench 165 and be lean, I had this idea in my head. I was like a little bodybuilder, you know what I mean? I'm going to have like these pecs and these abs, and yeah. like all of a sudden the world's going to be so different. And I benched like 200 or something a year later, and I'm right. like, it's not different. Like, it's, <laughs> I'm the same. Did you maybe weigh like, what, 50, 60 pounds more than most of the kids in your class uh, or something like that? Man, um, or is well, it more like 100? 
Well, like I said, I, I failed a few times. Uh, I ended up getting moved up to eighth grade anyways just because I did homeschooling. But a lot of the time, I was older and bigger than everyone in class. Yeah. Um, so that, uh, you know, I, at least it wasn't so bad. Um, I did, Towards the later years, there was no one around that could really mess with me. Right. I mean, I got to like 15 or 16. I was stronger <laughs> than like yeah. the gym coaches by far. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So um, then I was set. But before that, when I was when I was young, because I was large, because I weighed a lot and was tall and shit, you know, I'd hang out with these older kids because, you know, I'd smoke or whatever, right. go do mischievous criminal shit. And um, there'd be kids that are like 15 that weigh, <laughs> I'm, you know, whatever, 12, you know, at the time. I weigh 200 pounds at 12. You know what I mean? And they're 15, they weigh like a buck 30 or something, but they bench <laughs> twice what I do. Right. You know what I mean? So they look like super badass or something if they mess with me. And I'm just sitting there like, I sure hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, like, I can't do anything about it, and I know it, you know. Right. Um, so that was, um, one of the main reasons I wanted to lift in the first place. Cause I was so, so tired of people being able to take advantage of me if they just chose to, right. you know what I mean, like people could just be like, eh, you know, I'll like mess with you and yeah. like, whatever. And it's like, oh, I can't do anything about that. And, um, like I had a good relationship with my brother, but it wasn't like, I'm having my brother beat you up or something. Right, <laughs> I right. mean, it wasn't that kind of a situation. It was just sort of like, you know, you probably wouldn't even tell him about it really. It's just like embarrassing. Um, so, uh, when I was younger, I, uh, I got bullied a considerable amount, um, was not a fan, you know what I mean? Right. So I, I ended up, um, just, uh, trying to avoid most people altogether, mostly, um, just kind of, uh, when I was 11, I started going on the internet like 18 hours a day or something. Jeez. Yeah. Porn like, or? Combination. <laughs> Most, mostly internet pool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Played that AOL or some shit? Uh, Play Ray. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah man i i actually i hated myself so much back then i actually um i got a fake picture i pretended to be someone i wasn't for like years like wow. years. Like you were two, the first catfish i was gonna say i was like well, yeah, one of the first at least <laughs> og catfish yeah people should have known i was like yeah i'm like super cool i'm like a drug dealer i'm like 18 i have abs i bench like 365 but like i'm here all day <laughs> you just like, described <laughs> me <laughs> like here all day like you know something's up like yeah. i'm not doing anything cool you can tell um, <laughs> People want to believe, though, honestly. No, they, they did, because they did. You know yeah. I mean? um, but, yeah, I, uh, that was um, that was probably the roughest time for me, just because, you know, you're fat. You know, everyone else that age, 11 or 12, whatever, is getting a girlfriend right around there. A lot of people are. Yeah. Or at least my friends were talking to girls and shit, and I never was, because I weighed twice what they did. And, you know, messed up in school a bunch of times, kept getting arrested. My little brother just died. My mom's, you know, talking to herself in the next room every morning and shit. And uh, I essentially just, like, kind of, like, escaped. You know I mean, I just, like, um, kind of went somewhere else. And at the time, I didn't really have anything to focus on at all. You know, I just, like, stayed home and, like, that was it. Right. You know, maybe, uh, maybe I'd try and, like, smoke weed or, like, you know, try and hang out with my friends or something. But, like, you hang out with the wrong people, you end up not being where you want to be. And I was hanging out with the yeah. wrong people, and I kept getting in trouble. I think I got arrested, like, five times or something before I was, like, 13. And it gradually got more serious. I didn't know it was getting more serious. I'm like, I'm going to go take beer out of this person's garage. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, well, I went in twice to grab two 12-packs, so that's, like, a double felony. Um, home invasion burglary? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twice. Um, <laughs> Oops. So I, I almost got locked up for um, a few months, like six months or something. And they held me there for, like, three weeks, and I was like, you know what? Like, <laughs> this is not for me. Like, these kids are bigger and stronger than me, too. Yeah. You know what I mean, those people are actually nice to me. It was strange. I just, like, stayed real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try and be cool around people that are stronger than you. Um, is there anything that uh, helped you um, sort of reform and get out of that? Yeah, lifting. Lifting is literally exactly what did it. Because I went from having my biggest desire in the world to be like, oh, someday I want to, like, grow weed or something or, like, sell weed. Or, I used to, like, be really into drugs and stuff, uh, drugs being weed. Yes. Um, not, but when you're, not, when you're not like, supplements yeah. that are good for you. When you're, when you're like, 12, you know, weed is a hell of a drug. It's, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're like, oh, my God. Like <laughs> Seems to be a hell of a drug for people still. Yeah. People seem to never get over it. No, it's, it's uh, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, what, what were you just saying? I don't know. Well, lifting saved your life. Matter. Lifting saved my life, more <laughs> or less. It gave me something else to focus on, and it gave me something else to um, to get, like, uh, you know, positive feelings from, more or less. I had nothing. I'm bad at school. I'm bad with friends. I'm bad with girls. I'm, I look bad. You know, what What am I good at except internet pool? And, like, <laughs> every single day. Yeah. When I was younger, me and my brother um, did not get a well, along so well at that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't really know. Uh, I was never in his shoes. You know what I mean? But not... Um, not incredibly supportive. <laughs> I mean, like you, you can probably imagine like yeah. one of those situations where it's just kind of like a uh, little shit brother bugging him all the time. You know, I, I pretty much avoided him most of the time. You know what I mean? I just hit, sit in my room and go on play Ray. But, um, 
Yeah, I don't want to throw him under the bus too bad because now everything's fine. But back <laughs> yeah. in the day, he was he was pretty bad with um, with the stuff he'd say to me. It's it's where I originally got my um, my feelings of uh, like low self esteem from right. mostly because like all that stuff's going on. So I'm telling myself I suck, and you have someone else coming around every day telling you you suck. <laughs> yep, you know yep, I mean? you he's, suck. he's like, yeah. You, so you, like, you're right. You do uh-huh. suck. So eventually. You know what I mean? Like, you just start to be like, yep, like, I suck. <laughs> like, and I remember just, uh, like, I'd see him get, like, a girlfriend. Just be really average. Like, you're a super average 16-year-old. You have a girlfriend, you go to school. You're, like, up to date in school, and, like, you're not obese. You know what I mean? And I'm like, man, you've got everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've got it made. Like, dude, I would love to be you. Like, why do you come and, like, pick on me? Like, you've got everything. Like, you have better things to do with your time. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, now we're now we're fine. That doesn't happen anymore. Um Probably a largely because we're just like we don't hang out that much. As anymore. you uh, built yourself up, you know, you said you were picked on and stuff. Did you ever uh, have to defend yourself, or you just got big enough to where it just was never a thing? You know, I, I never did that great of a job defending myself in general. Um, I've been in some mutual fights. You know what I mean? Um, one of them, uh, I remember this. This fucked me up for years. This this was a huge issue for me. I'm always like playing basketball at school. It's like. Probably, uh, you know, I'd failed like two times already. And this year, I'm like, I'm just going to like go to school now and like try and do good playing basketball. And I said something to this kid. I don't remember what I said, like watch out or something. You know what I mean? Because we're playing. And um, like he turned around. I was kind of standing like here and he's kind of standing here. And he swung and like hit me in the nose. I mean, it broke my nose. Like the first the first hit he did, that's just yeah. the way it worked. I remember I'd been boxing for a little while just because I got sick and tired of people being stronger than me and shit. Yeah. And I ended up hitting him like eight times in the face or something. It was like it was exactly what you'd like hope it to be. Yeah. But um, but he like he just kind of like tucked and like you know protected himself very well, and he didn't end up having any broken bones, whereas I yeah. did. So I'm this like 220 pound kid benching like 160 or something at like 14, and um, he's like this hundred like 20 pound kid. He I popped come, you with a good one. Uh-huh. And I come back shot. to school like three days later. I have two huge black eyes yeah. and a super swollen nose. And I remember walking through the hallway. I'm already like messed up. You know, what I mean? I'm yeah. already like low self esteem. I'm walking through the hallway. Everyone's just like, "You got your ass kicked, yeah. bro." I, and I get into class, and the first thing the teacher says, "Oh, they, he really did beat you up bad, didn't he?" <laughs> oh, I remember. No. The, I remember the first thing I did. Thanks, I, fucker. Uh-huh, I just. I just. I, I wish awesome. I could see that teacher again, man. I, I really wish. She'd be like, "You're terrible." Um, the first thing I, did, I just. I just called my mom to pick me up, and I never went back. Um, it really like damaged me like badly because I was already in a really bad spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I remember. Um, a good example is like my dad would always try and get me to go back to school and I was like, you don't understand. I have like panic attacks and shit, like really, really bad anxiety. And um, he'd be, you know, he even offered me money at some point, like a lot of money. Um, he's like, I'll give you like five grand or some shit. Like, just go back to school. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, yeah. I can't. Like, no. You know what I mean? Um, and they try and get me to go to school and I just like, I go grab a laptop and go like sit in a tree house or some shit. You know what I mean? There's just nothing. I just felt like there was nothing I could do to go back. It was just seemingly impossible. Um, and that's like the way my life was for like a really long time, like really, really, really bad social anxiety, really, really, really low um, self-esteem, like incredibly low. Like um, you would never think nowadays, just if I didn't tell you, like just to talk to you, how bad it actually was. Yeah. Because um, I'll try and give you an example. I, if I went to the grocery store, well, first of all, I wouldn't go to the grocery store. You know what I mean? I just tell my parents what to get me kind of thing. But if I went to the grocery store, I'd be like terrified to pay for anything because then I have to talk to the cashier. And this is at like 16 or something, 15? 16, 17, 18, okay. 19, yeah. literally. Um, the first girlfriend I had was at 20, and I only had, I was 235 at the time. That's why she wanted to be my girlfriend, you know what I mean? I had mm-hmm. abs and shit. <laughs> um, she lived in a different state, and she flew down to see me, and, the, and um, she actually had to like force herself on me kind of thing. I was like, no, you can't come. <laughs> <laughs> like, nope. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's just not acceptable. Like, you just can't come. You know what I mean? And uh, I probably would not have had a girlfriend if I didn't have someone literally like fucking pressure themselves onto me because right. that was the only person I'd ever actually told anything about too. Um, like, you know, I told him I was screwed up in school. I didn't have a driver's license until I was like 20, you know, all kinds of shit. And, um, you know, that's pretty much how that came about. I have did to your uh, dad ever think about like uh, getting you like therapy or anything or did he not understand like the dynamics of what was going on with you? Um, I don't think he understood in full detail right. because there was so many um, he's just, like different he's just factors. working and doing other shit yeah. too. He doesn't have time yeah. to really pay attention to every detail. Yeah, he had a pretty significant job at the time, and he, he did a decent amount of traveling um, for uh, you know different states and shit. And you know, I, and you might not have been accepting to. It. I mean, a teenager yeah, trying to get a teenager to do anything. That. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you know I, I don't know. Make how their he felt. bed even is fucking. <laughs> I don't know how he felt about therapy. Yeah. Uh, he never got anything like that for himself, so right, that's probably right. what he thought. Um, he was, um, he was as supportive as he could be. I just don't think he understood because, uh, my mom had always been a little bit off, but like you couldn't tell until mm-hmm. like she really like completely kind of like broke. 
But um, because we were so religious, my mom would tell me stories of, like, demons she saw when she was very young. And being five years old, you believe all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So very, I was always very, very real to you then. Yeah, I was always very afraid of, like, everything. Yeah. You know, being five years old, I for years I slept, um, like, when I was, you know, five to eight. And then, like, I don't know, 11 to, like, 14 or something. I slept out in my living room, like, on a couch. You know what I mean? I'd play the TV all night. Um, just afraid of everything. Like, everything. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd have all these stories and stuff that my mom would tell me. And I'd pretty much just take her word for it. You know, you go outside, someone's going to kidnap you. You know what I mean? If you look over there in the dark, there's going to be a face there, like, just waiting to screw with you. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, fuck. that kind of shit. Yeah, so, damn, Mom. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> no, she, uh, she didn't, she didn't under, I don't know whether she understood or didn't care. I struggle yeah. with that still. I'm like, why do you tell me these things? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know I don't want to hear that. You know what I mean? Um, but she, uh, she kind of threw me off a little bit with all that kind of thing and, and kind of um, also very... Uh, she was always of the belief that, you know, our family was, uh, you know, being really like, the most important family in the world. TV shows are about us, family guys about us, shit like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, she kind of uh, always really worried about her kids. You know, she uh-huh. lost a bunch of kids and she'd had some problems when she was young, too. And, uh, you know, always tried to baby me and my brother like as much as possible. You know, she really liked that I would stay home. She didn't want me to get a job. She didn't want me to get a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. She thought the world was going to end really soon, and she wanted me to stay home until it ended. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, literally. I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. So, actually, I mean. She uh, have a mental health issue or drug oh, issue? Oh, yeah, she's a something? schizophrenic. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's, like, hardcore, like, um, hears and sees things right. and all kinds of shits. Very complex stories that you can't reason her out of, even if it doesn't seem like it would ever be an issue to reason them out of it. You know, like family guy is not about us, mom. I don't care if you are from Long Island. You know what I mean, like you don't have red hair. Like dad's name isn't, isn't Peter. We don't have a sister. Dog Andrew's, doesn't talk. Yeah, Andrew's not Chris. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, but look, uh, our dog won't talk. That's got to be evidence right there. Yeah, it's, it's um, <laughs> kind of unfortunate. Uh, so how is she now? She's you know still uh, worse. around. It, it gets worse. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that kind of thing only. Uh, you know, schizophrenics in general, uh, from my experience, they have a kind of like a grand story that they tell themselves about themselves. And it might sound terrible to you. It might be like, oh, my God, why would you choose to believe that you've been killed and resurrected a hundred times yeah. by demons or something? Why would you choose to believe that? And then you realize what it really is. It's a very grand thing. It's a very like I'm almost more than Jesus Christ. He only died once. I've died a hundred times. Right. You know, I'm, I know all these world leaders, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to you have to realize that convince them otherwise you'd be taking from them who they are and what they actually truly believe. Because for her to realize that um, she's not indeed one of the world leaders, you right. know what I mean? Like uh, friends with George W. Bush and shit like that. Right. That's you know she would have to accept that she's a housewife and you know, lost a lot of kids and yeah. her her relationship with her husband has not been you know ideal because of her beliefs. You know what right. I mean? Do you still talk to your mom? Yeah, um, I do. Uh, not as much as I probably should simply because she can't, um, like avoid talking about, uh, a lot of the things she believes it's her every day. It's all day. Yeah. You know what I mean, but, um, I talk to her, you know, a couple times a month kind of thing. And, uh, usually, usually I can kind of get her to keep it kind of mellow and not, not go too crazy with it. Most of the time it's warning me about someone being in the attic or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a letdown. You're to watch like, someone. I don't have an attic. <laughs> yeah. There's probably only so much of the crazy that you can handle at, at any given time well you know i, I handled so much of it growing up right I, i'd stay at home all the time with her so i'd spend you know four or five hours a day trying to convince her otherwise right you know what i mean like it's let me reason with you let me explain you know what i mean so you know i uh i got that from my dad you always try and reason with people you always try and like talk it through and stuff and i pretty much came to the conclusion like you can't with some people yeah like it doesn't matter how reasonable it seems you know what i mean you just can't you know, it's um, the same thing with uh, someone who suffers from addiction. You know, mm-hmm. you you just can't always apply uh, logic to people that aren't acting logical. Right. It's just it's it's a real uphill battle, and it's sad and it hurts to even try to to do it a lot of times. So, you have to uh, you know hope that the person gets some sort of treatment, and then you're able to at least make you know, some sort of sense of something. Yeah. The on, the only real problem is is it's so mixed in with her religion, yeah. and her religion is going to be how she sees her kids again. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it will never change. <laughs> right, like right, you, right. I mean, that would, you'd be taking her kids all over again, kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So she'll be sticking with that forever. But you know, she's you know relatively harmless. <laughs> 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 like every now and then, um, she'll do something uh, like not okay, but um, not killed anyone any people yet right is she capable of living on her own or oh no um she broke up with uh 
or got a divorce from my dad. He takes care of her. Uh, he doesn't like have any other girlfriends or anything. He still feels like they're married, and she doesn't do that kind of thing either. But she moved out, and she rented a few apartments at once because they were haunted. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And um, she's not uh, – like she needs to be given a certain amount of money every month kind of thing right. and have like a home that's paid for and, you know, someone very reasonable around. So hopefully he lives a long time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because um, – that's going to be a job, you know. Um, you said the lifting, uh, you know, it just made you feel good and uh, helped give you some uh, confidence and stuff. Uh, what else do you think it has taught you uh, to kind of lead you to where you are now? Because it seems like it seems like you're doing pretty well for yourself. It seems like you are, are heading in a really positive direction. You have a girlfriend. She seems really fucking cool. She's into lifting. She seems very supportive. So what do you think the lifting has done, um, you know, on, on top of just kind of giving you a good feeling and, and some confidence? Well, um, it's pretty much changed uh, my entire outlook on everything. Um, as you know, the principles of lifting, hard work, dedication, persistence right. can be applied to anything. And if you work at something long enough and hard enough, you can kind of shape anything the way you want it to. Your job, your life, your girlfriend, your, whatever, your friendships and stuff. And um, I've pretty much found that uh, the harder I w – if I know what I want, you know what I mean? Like I know I want to be bigger and stronger. If I know what I want out of other things – I can work towards them, too, in the same exact way. Um, like with Tessa, I actually knew exactly what I wanted in a girlfriend, like, before I found one, before I found her. I had, like, sort of like You're a like, list. like, hmm, who understands 900-pound deadlifters? <laughs> pretty much. I, I pretty much had, like, a very specific thing that I was looking for, and so I was able to find it. And um, in general, lifting has brought me um, – I didn't build my confidence, really, until I started making videos with other people. Because um, primarily when I was younger, I would uh, be on bodybuilding.com for like whatever, 40 hours a day or some crap, you know, all, uh, all the time. Let's just back up a second. You were, uh, so you started lifting when you were like 14. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, kind of slid downhill even further in terms of uh, not wanting to communicate with people and not feeling great about yourself. Uh -huh. At like 16 or 17, is that when you were like around 400 something pounds or so? Yeah, I, I was uh, 330 at 16, 17, I was like 350 or something, 330. Did you think you were just on an awesome bulk, or is that just happening because of everything in life? Um, well, my... Awesome my, bulking. <laughs> Hashtag awesome bulk. <laughs> believe, it or, believe it or not, um, I, oh I, felt, I felt so little, I didn't think I could ever get myself out of it, you know what I mean? My plan was to be the strongest teenager ever, I wanted to break a record, then I could be something, I could be yeah. proud of something, mm. could be someone, remember. And, and uh, you were also making videos kind of already at that point? Yeah, I, I posted little, stuff as little proof, bit of, you know okay. what I mean? Like proof yeah. videos for stuff right but the the plan was to be the strongest teenager ever and then just like kill myself like i I wanted to die for like years yeah i was just like you know how are you gonna kill yourself when you've done nothing and accomplished nothing you know what i mean like it's just it seems so it seems even more you know it seems worse that way than it, at least if i had done something first so for a long time that was the goal um because i never saw anything good coming like well i'm like you know really shitty at school everyone tells me if i don't go to college like life's gonna be terrible you know what I mean? Like, um, people really don't give you a great outlook. Some people will be like, you can be anything you want. And you're like, sure. I think you probably know? the yeah. most depressing thing I've heard so far is the switch from Dragon Ball Z to Pokemon. <laughs> I think that's kind of like what led, don't you think? Isn't that, what you're, isn't that what you're saying? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. It's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Pikachu. <laughs> So you did kind of think you're on an awesome bulk. You're well, like, I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to break this record. I absolutely hated it. I hated it. Yeah. Like, it's just nothing good about it. Um, I liked eating, but, like, I didn't, you know what I mean? It's, I just, A lot of whatever. pizza and stuff, or were you trying Dairy, to Dairy, chia. You know? A lot of, I would add beef to everything, beef yeah. on pizza and macaroni and cheese. But you thought that's what it would take to get your goal. Of course. Yeah. I, I didn't, um, I wasn't aware of people using drugs all the time. I, I was like, oh, so people run, like, a six-week cycle of like pro hormones or something so you have to get as strong as you can naturally first and then you just do one because yeah. you get weaker afterwards <laughs> you know what i mean so i was like well if i want to live what other people do i'm gonna have to weigh more than them i was i would just want to do i was willing to do more than other people yeah. you know what i mean more or less I was, I was willing to gain more weight train more often you know that kind of thing and um ended up working out pretty well it's fortunate that i didn't understand everything the way i do now because um you know i probably wouldn't have got as far as i did like naturally yeah. as a, a teenager i got really really strong what's naturally. your best like pole or uh something like 17 17 i could deadlift 700 for four and i could squat um probably like 725 in knee wraps i think i did Jeez. and um the I internet's gonna say liar <laughs> um, he doesn't I squat I think I have some videos actually. I I've, I've seen I've seen you squat before. I think you squat at least seven plates uh, for a few reps. Look pretty easy from what I remember. Yeah, I, I used to love squatting. Um, you can you can go harder on squats than anything. You can train them all the time. Yeah, you know 
know what I mean? And that was the problem is I could train them all the time and I did train them all the time. And I developed um, a habit of doing legs multiple days in a row followed by multiple days of rest, which does work very well. It's essentially like doing more sets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you just accumulate fatigue and then back off and, and grow and recover. But that also leads to a lot of other problems, you know, overuse and stuff like that. Yeah. I think the worst thing I did for squatting, though, the real reason is everyone used to be all about geared lifting. And then, and so it was box squats. Box right. squats are what you want to do. They're better than regular squats, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, okay, I won't do regular squats for now. I'll do box squats. Well, try taking the box away afterwards. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you keep you going like down. You fall. No. You, keep, you keep going downwards. Briefs aren't going to catch you. Yeah. Well, I wasn't even wearing briefs, you know what I mean? That's what I mean, but that's what, why yeah, they exactly. do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just, uh, you know, I went down too low and hurt myself at like 15. A couple of years later, I did it again. Uh, a couple of years later, I did it again. Like, it's just, uh, yeah. you know, if I could have, if I would have known more early on, I could have avoided a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but fortunately, at least now I know what I did wrong. You know, so I, I can help other people avoid the same shit, which I try to. So even at like 17 and 18, you're building yourself up you're starting to lift some really awesome weights 700 uh pound deadlift for four reps um and you're trying to go towards this goal of uh you know breaking a world record and then just ending it all yep um so it's like you're, you're lifting and you're getting some satisfaction from lifting but it's still not enough what is the turning point that kind of flipped things around to where you're like oh you know what maybe i shouldn't the, kill myself the turning point was um you know, the first relationship I got in was was uh, pretty bad. You know what I mean? Is I found someone not not actually schizophrenic, but like quite like my mom, like yeah. pretty pretty something bad. I don't know why. It's, you you had to be a man in a relationship, otherwise you end up screwing yourself over. And I, <laughs> I wasn't a man at the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I was like a little kid. Um, and uh, you know, I had a hard time with that. But when I finally got out of that relationship, um, I realized I could like better control my life because I could you know keep stuff clean around me. I could focus on other things. And um, I realized I got my happiness from, like, work. And I realized I got my happiness from, like, building stuff, you know, like a, either a business or my body or whatever. And I started focusing on doing better with, you know, work and doing better with training. And I started focusing on what I wanted out of life. And um, that's when everything really started going really so, well. I mean, just basically you started to kind of fucking figure shit out for yourself. Pretty much. Um, I yeah. realized that, you know, if I want something, I have to, like, know what it is so I can work towards it. And I set, like, some pretty small goals for myself that I thought would make me very happy. And, you know, I've been working towards them. And it's, I've, I've never found uh, more happiness than, than that, more or less. Lifting didn't make me happy so much simply because I, got, I was getting fatter while doing it. I was in a lot of, a lot of pain while doing it. I just ignore it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, mostly it was like, if I get stronger, great, because I weigh, you know, 350. You know, it's cool no one else cares so um but if i don't get stronger i like hate myself so it was like pretty like yeah. balanced of, yeah, uh, it, it, miserable, there's a really. fine line there with uh being big you know um somebody will see uh what we're talking about uh, mo is it josh morris yeah, josh morris you know people will say you know people see him lift the guy benches over 600 pounds yes. i think he pulls about 800 pounds yeah, and he squats he's pulled well over eight i think and i think he's pulled like 850 yeah, and, he and then he squats, squats eight something and sleeps i mean he's yeah. a monster yeah he's a monster but then people just say oh he's fat or mark henry back when mark henry was right. crushing things and Robert uh wilkerson yeah yeah people yeah. will just discredit it and Okay, yeah, the guy's heavier, and so he can move more weight, but it doesn't totally discredit the lifts completely. Yeah, not every fat guy can move that weight. Yeah, but yeah. they'd rather, in, in general, most people would rather see somebody of 180 to like 230 pounds move some move something pretty heavy, and I think they're most impressed usually with that. Yeah, yeah that did seem to be the case because I would be doing ridiculous lifts at like 16. I go and post it on bodybuilding.com, and everyone would just be like, it's pretty strong. You're like fat as fuck, and you're yeah. never gonna die. You're gonna like, step you on suck. stage like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's gonna die. Um, so, so who are you, who were your training inspirations then back then? Oh, man, I had I had a lot. Um, I liked Andy Bolden. I liked Benedict Magnuson. I liked uh, Ryan Canelli. I liked Scott Mendelson. You know, I, I could probably I'm trying to think of some other names that don't really do too much lifting anymore. Um, Josh Bryant was one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Josh Bryant was a fucking tank. I'm trying to think of the other guy's name. Nick Winters. I was oh, a huge yeah. Nick Winters fan. Um, he actually talked to me a little bit online and stuff, and that just, like, made my year. Um, he was strong. There's, there's a lot of people, man. I'm not really going to be able to name them all. Towards, as time went on, it became other people. You know, they, they showed up. I didn't know about them at the time. Stan Everting and stuff like that. Uh, Eric Spoto and whatnot. But You mentioned earlier uh, Eric Lillibridge. I think sometimes people mm -hmm. forget that uh, – you know, Eric is probably what twenty four. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. about the same age. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. uh, 
you know, people forget the guy's been around forever. He started lifting at like 14, probably right. or something like that, and I he's think been he 650 or some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching his videos since I was like 15. I've been I've been talking to him since I was like 15 online. I got a chance to go up and train with him for a few months uh, a couple of years ago. And um, definitely was very positive, you know, like very yeah. positive experience. The whole family is very positive. Oh, yeah, really, really super great family, re- very nice people, like super nice. I don't, I've never heard anyone say otherwise, honestly. Right. Um, yeah, and Eric was, I think, at a maybe one of the youngest people to ever pull 800 pounds or something like that. Or, he, or he maybe he did it at 18 or whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure if he's the youngest. You know, he did uh, an 800-pound deadlift at 18 in training. Um, yeah. He did a lot. He did a 500-pound bench, too, and stuff like that. It seems like uh, gains can be made really fast, and then it becomes you know an issue of just not right. messing stuff up. Because I, I think he's had a yeah, number of hurt. head problems over the years yeah. here and there, and um, that's probably really the only reason that he doesn't bench like six fifty an hour or some yeah. crap, right. some crap like that. Fortunately, he's gotten pretty lucky with squats. I think. Yeah, not getting injured. When, yeah. when you're watching some of these videos, uh, you know, as you were moving moving forward. Uh, did you think some of these lifts were in range, or did you think, fuck, man, I suck? Or did you still have that mindset? Um, uh, like a 1,000-pound squat? or Yeah, just any of I mean, you know, big deadlifts or whatever. Did you kind of think you were, you know, in range and good enough and deserving of that to be able to accomplish some of those things? You know, I always had, uh, like, oddly high expectations of certain things. I was always like, well, I'm going to, you know, deadlift 900 pounds and whatever, you know. Um, but, uh I, I thought I would bench 600. I thought I would deadlift like nine something. You know, I, I thought I would squat like in the eights in a, you know, a belt, which, you know, I would have done forever ago if, you know, I was lucky enough to not uh, have trained myself in the beginning. Right. You know what I mean, if I would have had any kind of um, guidance with that from someone, it was just so hard to find anyone I respected in my area. Right. You know what I mean, like no one, I squatted more than they did when I was, you know, 14 or 15. So why would I, why would I ask them? Right. Right. Um, plus, everyone's like, you're going to hurt yourself doing that stuff that I haven't been hurt doing. So um, right. I, I kind of ignored all those people. Uh, I guess it worked out. I just wish you know, I could have gone to a gym like this or, or something like that instead because then I probably would be squatting whatever I wanted right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's your best uh, squat and bench? You're kind of known for your deadlift. Um, my best squat, I think, is 750 in a belt. Um, I, I worked up a few months ago before the animal. I got invited to the animal cage, and I, I did a couple squat workouts in a row. I think the second or third workout, I worked at a 675 for four pause squats and a belt. And on the fourth rep, I pulled my inner thigh, which, you know, super typical of me. Like, I've, I've pulled my inner thigh tons of times. I'm not really sure how to get to it. You know what I mean? It's very hard to massage. In, yeah, yeah, it's a weird spot. Yeah. Mark's, yeah. Mark's really good at massage in that area. If you want some help. It's, it's brutal. I, I, I try and get my girlfriend to do it and stuff, and she has a hard time, even as strong as she is. So I'd, I'd have to go to someone pretty serious to work on that, and it would feel terrible. Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is it's a referred pain, and she's got to stick her thumb up your ass. It's usually, <laughs> yeah, it's usually, yeah. You need yeah. four hands down there, I think. Yeah, you need one on the cock, one, yeah. yeah. Well, there's two balls, so you need one, two. Fuck, I think we need a mathematician. For a bench, How I many d- balls do you have, three? <laughs> <laughs> I don't count the third one. Oh, okay. um, Just kind of a nodule. Uh, I think my best bench is 500 for a triple with a pause. I believe it might have been 495. Is that semi recent? Uh, like a year ago or something yeah, like that. 495, you can call 500. You can yeah. just do it. You yeah, know? he's lying. He's five, cheating again. It was 495. Five plates. <laughs> five plates. 500. Five Recently, plates. I, I I only ever really do high reps nowadays. Um, What's some of those have, numbers? Uh, well, I didn't lock out last time. I did close grip bench, which if I'm doing high reps, I just don't. Yeah, lock who out, cares? You know what I mean, um, I did 325 for 30, Damn. but bouncing and stuff like that. Yeah, we don't I, care. I'm like a strong presser, you know what I mean. But um, again, benching is something I did a ton of when I was younger, and before I knew what I was doing, the stuff that worked best was just beating the crap out of yourself. Yeah. and typically like, that leads to issues. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, right. I've learned quite a bit over the years about um, you know training less often, safer, staying hydrated, <laughs> mobility, and all that kind of crap, massage, whatever. Um, but uh, I've never been that great of a bencher. You know, 105 when I started, it took a year to get to 200. Progress picked up speed a lot whenever I started learning what worked. I learned the principles of progressive overload and switching yeah. out exercises <laughs> and all that kind of thing, technique. Um, but hmm, I'm just not a great bencher, honestly. I, I'm sure I could do 600 pounds if I... Uh, could keep myself together. Give me like three months, guaranteed me I wouldn't hurt anything. I'll bench six hundred pounds. You know I mean, but like, where's the guarantee in that? You know, yeah. I, mean? right. I have a, I have a lot of scar tissue right through here, um, from you know multiple uh, pec pulls and stuff like that. Never any bleeding. Never any like significant tears. 
but like you don't need them to be that significant. You need to uh, your uh, you need to put a peck deck in your living room. <laughs> yeah, and, just hit uh, it. Yeah, get those pecs. You know, get yeah, those pecs going. I really need peck to. popping. I wonder though if a stim machine might hurt a uh, help a giant like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I actually used one relatively recently, not on my chest, um, on my lower back, spinal erector, and it did. It helped a ton. Yeah. I'd I'd like to get one of those. Hopefully, it's not like thirty thousand or something ridiculous. Yeah, they make a, they make a big difference. Can't, That's where we're always really compacts in ourselves. Yeah, you have to be careful putting it on your chest, though. That's a whole, you know, like heart thing. Yeah, yeah I think they don't want it on both sides. Yeah. 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 I think you just have to kind of keep it more towards the shoulder. Yeah. It's going to kind of grab and pull over that way anyway, yeah. so mm-hmm. it's not too not too terrible. But, yeah, <laughs> you can fuck yourself up with that. <laughs> Cardiac arrest. Um, how did you uh, – so you built yourself – up to uh, around 400 something pounds how much did you weigh what was the most you ever weighed you know my skull only went up to 400 um i was 385 Piece of shit. we've exactly. had that problem here at super training before too i was 385 and then i uh, stopped weighing myself just because i couldn't you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean and um Go to I, I had or something yeah I, I put like another inch on my waist beyond that kind of thing you hashtag know what I mean? awesome bulk yeah <laughs> um i was large i was very strong but, like, man, like, walking around the block and stuff was just, like, brutal. And, yeah. you know, you can't sleep and stuff. Yeah, and good thing there's no humidity where you live in Florida. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you God, probably didn't man. sweat at all. <laughs> man, I could, I could sweat in, like, the winter in Florida. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I sweat right now with the fan on me and in the air know, conditioning. In the air conditioning. <laughs> How did you go from that uh, 400 pounds to uh, – what? and what did you go down to? How did you uh, kind of accomplish it all? Um, well, I got hurt. So that that's kind of played a role because I couldn't maintain as much muscle. Got hurt mass. in the gym. I got hurt in my inner thigh again for the millionth time. You know what right. I mean? Having one of these workouts where I'm, I've been watching Pat Mendez. You know who Pat Mendez yeah, is? Yeah, of course. He squatted 800 pounds in a belt. Yeah, and deep. And everyone's he was like, like, he was like yeah. 18 or 19. Yeah, everyone's like, well, he's average. better than you. You're not as strong as him, so you suck. Well, I'm like, well, I'm gonna start Olympic <laughs> squatting. And I was I was gonna do 315 for 10 sets of 10. I was Fucking all pissed Pat off and Mendes shit. Pat Mendez fucked you up. Yeah, the the God first damn it, Pat. the first rep I did, I I, I tore the shit out of something because I was just like, I'm just gonna throw myself down there i don't care and um no like you have to actually pay attention to your yeah. body and stuff you can't i i trained with too much like aggression and anger to actually like care about my body yeah you know what i mean it, the goal was always to beat your body down for me it was always to like almost punish yourself in the gym yeah and um that's, that's actually a really good point i think a lot of people need to be careful of that especially uh newer lifters mm-hmm. you'd be cautious of that yeah, a lot of people will take out a lot of stuff on themselves thinking that the more the better kind of thing. The more the better as long as you can maintain form and you're like paying attention to yourself and you know. Yeah, you have you some care. kind of work capacity. You have to you have to love yourself a little bit, man. <laughs> Just a little bit, like 5%. Like you have to be like I don't want to hurt myself, it matters, you know what I mean? <laughs> um whereas I I just kind of didn't, you know what I mean? I hadn't really been hurt a thousand times at that time, so I was kind of like didn't expect it. Um, you follow some sort of specific diet to lose the weight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I went um, went from eating whatever I was, some asinine, to uh, I know, like twenty five, th- three thousand calories, then two twenty five hundred. Did and you just uh, start reading about some of this stuff on the internet, and then started making your own judgment calls? How did you kind you of know, come man, to these conclusions? Like I said, I obsess over stuff. So between fourteen and like twenty, I did incredible amounts of reading, like incredible. Um, didn't uh, didn't like science it up, you know? What I mean, I wasn't like, oh, why does this do this kind of thing? Like a lot of people can do you for just you. Just kind of like I weigh this, I should eat a, this amount, sort of deal. Well, I mean, I had a I had about as as much knowledge as you can gain from articles and right. from talking to people on forums and stuff. So I knew about macros. I knew what you know, slow and fast acting protein and carbs and you know, carb cycling and all that kind of thing. And it it was a pretty basic diet. You know, what I mean, I I think I was doing like two hundred fifty grams of protein. Most days I would do um, no carbs. This is towards the end. I do no carbs. Got down about 1,900 calories, um, and I was doing uh, like three hours of cardio a day, and I was training two or three times a Damn. day. Wow. So you yeah. progressively uh, you you progressively reduced the amount of calories, mm-hmm. and you progressively added in more exercise. Yeah. Once once I got down to that low number in 1,900, and I realized like going beneath that, like I'm just doing myself harm. I mean, uh, then I started doing you know, two uh, or three workouts a day, more cardio and stuff like that. What body weight did you get down to? I was um, like 236 or something at my absolute like and lowest. How long did that take? It took a year and a half. Jeez. The first the first 100 pounds was lost in six months. And that was um, hard to do. I never had a single cheat meal or anything. I think Thanksgiving I had a, um, 
like diet soda and a salad. And um, what did that do for you? That must have that must have done some crazy shit for you mentally. Mentally, uh, well, to do it actually, believe it or not, it was so hard for me and so foreign to me because I'd always eat whatever I wanted. I actually had to make up like another person in my head and ask myself what they would do because I was <laughs> right. like, well, I can't, I can't do that shit. And I was like, well, if there was someone that I admired and looked up to, like, what would they do in this situation? I'm like, they just get up and do cardio. I was like, well, okay, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Um, it's not something I feel like I could have done like, uh, completely on my own. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I really had to, um, look at it from a different perspective because, you know, Did it's you like turn and, and ask the person or was it more like mental? Oh, it's, it's mental. You know what I mean? It's, it's, Billy, uh, what, what, what should we do this morning? <laughs> you, you'll always try oh, and you be, should go to the gym, bitch. <laughs> you'll always try and be easier on yourself. You know right. what I mean? So it's, it's better to almost, if you have to think of what someone else would do, who's better than yeah. you. Well, that's you why I mean? uh, people need coaches, right? A coach can tell you what to do and you don't have to think about it. You're like, all right, coach said I have to do cardio. That is, that is very <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Cause you, you really will always go a little bit easier. I do it with myself all the time. Yeah, yeah. It would be great to do more, but uh, probably just yeah. take a. I did enough. Yeah, take a break. We don't need leg curls today, that kind of thing. Uh, Eighteen months to lose a hundred and something pounds. One hundred fifty. Yeah, the last year took it took a year to lose fifty pounds because I had been screwing up my metabolism so bad by. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, adding like, in all the extra exercise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dropping calories a little too quick, maybe. Probably that's no. probably exactly what happened. No. Um, all in all, it should have, you know been a little bit more consistent because the last year I would um I'd have to stop dieting and regain some weight to speed my metabolism back up and regain some lost size and strength because you'd you'd lose you you know you do no carbs you lose a significant amount almost immediately and I'd start to get like upset you know two months in after dropping another 25 pounds or something and I'd stop losing weight didn't matter what I did I just didn't lose weight anymore um so I'd have to go back and um, up my eating a little a little bit gain another 10 pounds back and then try and maintain it and diet down again so the last 50 pounds took forever, even with all the extra work and stuff. Um, but, you know, all in all, like, totally worth doing. Uh, if I had to do it again, um, I probably would have uh, – it's hard to say I'd do anything differently because it worked out. You know what I mean? But I probably just would have not regained the weight those few times, even though it, it did help. I, I do believe it was – Pretty close to a necessity, right. I mean, but it added so much extra time to the diet. Right. I probably would have been better off just getting it done and then regaining the strength afterwards right. at a you know a faster pace instead of drawing it out for so long. From a mental standpoint, you know, you kind of mentioned, you know, almost uh, you know inventing another person sort of thing to go through it. Um, what did it do for you uh, going through it though? Oh man, uh, well, I realized that. Uh, I could pretty much just like whatever I set my mind to if I was, you know, wanted to be consistent, you know, because most huge things are just little bits of, you know, work consistently, like all the right. time. Um, it, it did give me a lot of um, like belief in myself. I always knew I could diet because I always felt like bulking was shittier and harder. Yeah. I was like, man, like I hate this. Like people don't understand <laughs> anything on being lazy and fat. Like, no, I hate this. <laughs> right. Like this is very, very hard for me to be 18 and be 380. Like I yeah. want to die all the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I don't have a girlfriend. Like this is miserable. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, you're just being lazy. Like, no, like just, you just wait. Like eating less is the easy thing to do. <laughs> like I'll, I'll just not eat that. Like watch me. It's <laughs> guaranteed progress. Um, so I always, I always knew I could diet. Um, but it was really nice to actually see it happen and like prove it to people because then the, I, I used to have thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people hate me and be like, you just suck. Like, you're just fat. And, like you'll never be. Every one of my videos had terrible comments. There was no good ones. It was just like, I, I didn't even read them after a while. I was just like, oh, like everyone's, that's everyone's probably so a, a mentally healthy choice right there. Not reading YouTube comments. <laughs> what do you think uh, made <coughs> you, uh, us. yeah. What do you think made you continue to make videos when you sucked so bad <laughs> um, <laughs> and you were so fat? <laughs> Well, just to, to prove it more or less, I kept a training log on bodybuilding.com, and I got a lot of support from people, some people who did like me. You know what I mean, they'd come in and read yeah, my and, log and, and stuff. And I'm sure a lot of people did appreciate the heavy lifting. They're probably like, hey, that's fucking yeah, cool. And some, some people probably didn't give a shit. A lot of people, uh, a, a decent amount of people thought it was really cool and were really supportive. And I'd post these long workouts. I'd train for three or four hours at a time and stuff. And, um, and you know, I just want to prove that I actually did it. You know, I was, right. this is one of the few things I was <laughs> proud of. And, um, you know, I didn't, I'd use a computer, like an old laptop or something, yeah. terrible video quality, no, nothing special at all. It, it wasn't for views or money or building a subscriber base. It was literally just like, no one will believe it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I just did whatever at 16, like I should probably prove it. Cause I'm pretty sure that federation says it's like five fifties, the record <laughs> yeah, it's like right. six Oh five for five or something. <clears throat> um, but what really made me like making videos was just, um, whenever I started talking like this, I used to have to hide everything about myself. I, no one could know anything about me because then they'd think about me what I think about myself. 
But it turned out the more I told other people about me, like the more I realized everyone was just like me. You know what yeah. I mean? And it actually helped other people because yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, George is like super cool or some nowadays. George is like super cool, but like, holy shit, like I was in his same shoes. Yeah. Actually, like I wasn't even as bad as he is. <laughs> and and, well, and what, so it helps. What, uh, what person can't relate to being depressed and feeling inferior as a teenager? I oh, mean, yeah. Exactly. You know? In adulthood, everyone has some yeah. kind of insecurity, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, it's it, the more people open up, the better the better off we all are because everyone's like, as soon as they hear someone say it, they're like, oh, my God, I feel the same fucking uh, yeah. way. Yeah, you kind of made yourself vulnerable to the Internet, and then the Internet uh, felt compassion for that. Yeah. Quite literally, man, I was so used to people just, like, hating me for, like, no reason no. that, like, I never wanted to make a video like that because I was so worried that that's what it would be. Yeah. You tell anyone, and people didn't need inf- bad information about me to hate me. If you make you know? feel any better, we hate you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Thanks, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> There's a thing that works on on YouTube, and it's just authenticity. You know, mm-hmm. people people recognize when you're being yourself. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. yeah. So what what are your goals going forward? Yeah. What's next for George Lehman? You just smashed the uh, American record, I think, within the last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to get it a little bit higher. Um, I gotta start training with hook grip again. Um, I feel like I'm strong enough to go over 900 and stuff. So it'll probably just be a few weeks of not getting hurt. Um, but I'd I'd really like to do it at 308. Because um, I really don't like weighing close to four and stuff like that. It's uh, I can't sleep right I to sleep on my stomach. I don't yeah. want to use a uh, you know one of those machines, a CPAP or whatever they are. Yeah. Um, not about that life yet. Um, and I'd, I'd like to look better. You know what I mean? I'd like to um, even even nowadays, like I really don't like how I look that much. I, I don't I don't really like how I lift either. You know what I mean? You never really lose those feelings of like wanting to be much better than you are. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. so I'll probably diet down, get my get the record up. Um, I have some other things I'm trying to do in life that are also important to me at the moment. Um, but in general, w- to do with lifting and YouTube, just grow my channel. Um, hopefully keep you know working with all the people I do and stuff like that. And uh, just be like a little bit better version of me all the time. Cool. Well, nothing, nothing crazy. You know what I mean? You mentioned uh, like <clears throat> maybe getting like a Winnebago or some mm-hmm. shit like that and uh, going on tour a little bit. Is that so- something? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, my girlfriend's... Ha- has a dream of traveling the country with her dogs in an RV. Um, I like the freedom of that, like very much so. It sounds fantastic to me, um, but uh, it'd probably be a year or so before I do that. Yeah. Simply because um, at the beginning of this next year, I'd like to move into another house, yeah. and before I can rent it out, I'd have to live there for a year mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, if I want to get like a decent interest rate on it, um, so it'll be a little while. But I, I do fully intend to travel around and, and make a bunch of videos and stuff. I'd much prefer to bring sort of my home with me versus fly to 40 different places so yeah. it'd be it'd be nice to travel around a good bit and be able to stay anywhere as long as i want there's tons of people across america and stuff i'd love to come and hang out with and, and say hi to and train with for a couple of weeks or something yeah i think that'd be really cool i think people would love that i would love it man <laughs> have you ever uh, had, Tessa would love it have you ever had like subscribers come in and, and train with you yeah um well mostly uh mostly clients kind of thing yeah. I, I don't really have um like just subscribers come in and, and train with them simply because like I stay really busy. I, I don't um, I don't even really have time to just uh, go and train with as many people as I'd like to right. kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I have people um, probably like once a month I'll meet up with someone and um, like train them for a few hours and like hang out and talk and stuff. And it's always really cool. It's always really fun because the people that do care enough to come out and talk to me are obviously you know very friendly and very much like me right. and that's why th- that's why they're there talking to me because they're pretty much in the same boat which is yeah. very comfortable for me so yeah it is kind of funny when you have fans like that and they uh they kind of put you up like on a pedestal and you're you see yourselves in them basically you're like mm-hmm. i'm kind of the same or was i was in the sh- your same shoes i'm not really anything that yeah. special but if you want to like me then that's fine great it's like we're on this side together we're not like yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah i i love that because i'm I'm so used to being looked at as like a failure and a loser and stuff that when people actually do are like, oh my God, like you're cool. I'm like, no, hold on. <laughs> we, we're the same. Like, yeah, it's the same we're, shit. We're it's, similar. It's so nice, man. It's it's so nice to have people um, think of me differently and to be able to like not be the asshole that people would like assume you might be. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, oh, he's going to be like, doesn't have time. He's like a dick or something. <laughs> like mean. Like, no. Um, like not at all. You know what I mean? Uh, I try and, I try and hang out with everyone. Yeah, people are extremely inspired by you. We put up, uh, I put up a picture a few days ago and, you know, right away it got like 3,500 likes. People were flipping out. And then even just, uh, some of the other stuff I posted of you in the last few days on Instagram and stuff like that, it's, it's gotten a lot of, uh, great comments. There's, there's been more comments and more likes on it than anything we've ever really posted from anybody else we've ever had on the show. So it, it, you're doing a good job of whatever it is you're doing. You're doing a good job of it. 
Yeah, man, I, I try. Um, I, I Sometimes I try and put out, like, motivational videos, mostly, uh, you know, just tell people to think about their life a little bit differently. That's a real key, you know what I mean? Like, see opportunity instead of none. Um, but in general, like, uh, a lot of it just, like, kind of happened. Like, it wasn't meant to be motivational. It yeah, wasn't man. meant to be uh, anything like that. And, you know, people liked it, I guess, because it was, like, genuine. So, um, you know, I, I guess I'll just keep doing it, right? Keep working out. I think the biggest thing I've got from you, you know, during this uh, talk is uh, is your transformation. Your body transformation, to me, is probably the most epic thing that you kind of mentioned uh, throughout the, uh, the the day. Obviously, there was a lot of tragedy and stuff in there uh, as well. But the, the body transformation, to me, seemed like the most pivotal thing that you went through because the strength thing, it seemed like you were sort of, uh, not that you're just like uh, some genetically gifted freak or anything you mentioned that it, it did take you a while to build some strength but i think that the strength came fairly easy to you and that you were passionate about it and that it wasn't uh it, it was a, a natural progression mm -hmm. whereas the diet thing you said you, you know you oh, were so used to eating whatever you wanted and now you had to go through this the discipline of training was something that you were like okay i'm on board with this mm -hmm. And as you mentioned earlier, it'd be really hard for you to learn something that you're not into. Right? Yeah. And now there you are, you know, putting yourself uh, in an uncomfortable situation and forcing yourself to lose 150 fucking pounds. That is really uh, amazing and inspirational. And I think that's what people are uh, so attracted to. Yeah, I think a lot of it's your mental strength. You talk about your dad's mental strength. There's a lot of that in you going through a, a lot of tragedy, uh, being picked on, being this, being that, having a rough hood. And uh, it looks like you're making it, man. Um. Maybe that's I mean, why his head's so big. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say I'm like a very like uh, mentally tough person kind of thing. Like I'd go hard on deadlifts. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm not like uh, I'm not like you know Matt Croc or some shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm not uh, not like that. Remember he told us his life's not that. Oh, we shouldn't talk about that. What? His life's not that hard. Who? We're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> his <laughs> life. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. My life is all things that I like. Um, <laughs> my I get to I get to train people. You know what I mean? Uh, which I love. Like I I actually used to do it for free, like all the time. Like yeah. I used to give out free stuff to everyone. All I was on a forum. You know what I mean? I just everyone free advice, free advice, this that, and I really enjoyed it. Nowadays, unfortunately, I can't because you know I have to pay for my own shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> if I could around. sit at home all day, you know what I mean? Like it'd be a little bit different. Um, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty damn happy with the way things are going at the moment. I have a very cheap lifestyle. You know I mean, I have like a small house. I live in Florida. It's very cheap. Um, I own my car, so I don't have like payments and stuff. And it's pretty much just like food for me and my girlfriend. I, you know, get eight man stuff. So I don't really buy clothes. I really like the way things work out for me at the moment. I'm, I'm very, very, very happy with it. I, I couldn't cool. ask for better, man. Honestly, I never thought. Yeah, we were talking uh, yesterday about. Uh, you were like, I can't reveal my real life because people are going to say that guy's yeah. an asshole. He just does whatever he wants. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I assume people will like quite literally dislike me if they know yeah. I'm like happy for some no, reason. No, you're a uh, you're a lumberjack and uh, you work uh, 18 hours a day, yeah. and you sleep four hours and you wake up and occasionally you do some heavy deadlifts in between. <laughs> yep. And then you help people online because you love it. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. we go. You talk it's, about um, charging for training and stuff. R Ronda Rousey said only amateurs fight for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, anything else going on? Anything else you want to plug? You mentioned uh, Eight Man Strong is, has got your back. Um, Eight Man, a really, really, really great company. I really like their shirts. Um, I wore them before I even knew who they were just because I liked them. But um, as I've gotten to know them, it's, it's two brothers, and they're really cool. Um, if, you are, if you guys are going to support a business, you know what I mean? That's the one. They're... they're um, it they're, is supporting, the f they're supporting powerlifting. They support sense. powerlifting. They love powerlifting. They're power lifters. They're really nice. You know, they're brothers. It's, yeah, it's their little company. Yeah, we had a chance to meet them at a, what, LA Fit Expo. Yeah, LA Fit Expo, yeah. Yeah, I, I strongly support them, and I'm, I'm sure I always will. You know what I mean? Uh, really great people, really nice. Um, I text them quite frequently and stuff. Send and, them some uh, dick pics and stuff like that. <laughs> here and there. They're, they're always super supportive and stuff. So um, if you guys do want some cool shirts, 8man's got it covered. What about like your uh, your own website? You have a website, uh, YouTube um, channel. Hit them up. Yeah, yeah. Um, MuscleMascus dot com. Uh, probably throwing a link or something. It's hard to spell. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, online coaching, training, stuff like that. I do tons of it. It's uh, it's really really cheap. Um, Fifty or sixty dollars a month or something. Just because I you know I'm, I don't want to be one of those people that charges people so much money that it hurts you them. Price you know? them out of it. Yeah. It, it it literally makes it hard for them to eat right and like they struggle with like their regular life and stuff. Yeah. I would much rather work with five people and charge, you know, fifty dollars and charge one person 
you know, 250. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then have everyone be happy because a lot, a lot of it's I about agree with that. In the grand happy. scheme of things, it's not going to really make that big of a difference for you whether you have 250 bucks from somebody or 50 bucks from somebody. Yeah, yeah it's very little difference. Um, I'm lucky enough to, to be able to work with a lot of people. So I don't need to. And, you know, I, uh, I don't like to. You know what I mean? If I could charge people more, I, I wouldn't really want to because I feel like they would not be as happy with the results they got. You know what I mean? I I want people to go, holy shit, like I got really awesome progress and I paid the right price for it and it was the right decision. That's what I want to see. You know, I I want people to be purely happy with it. I don't, um, even if I could, I I wouldn't want to charge, you know, an arm and a leg and fuck over some 22-year-old guy who, (laughs) you know, uh, works as a corrections officer or some shit. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, if you guys do want to work with me by all means, um, I pretty much work with everyone around any injuries, around any, uh, schedule limitations, any equipment limitations, any goals, everything is adjustable. So by all means, uh, hit me up, email me, check out musclemascus.com and, um, we'll get to work. Um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, is there any, uh, in closing here, is there any questions that you get asked all the time that, uh, maybe be, uh, Maybe we can clear it up here on the podcast hmm. for some newer uh, people. Oh, uh, squats, right? People are always yep. asking me if I squat. Um, kind of covered it a little bit already. Um, I don't squat like very often at all. I don't do squat variations very often at all, mostly because I'm a deadlift specialist. If squats, can, squats will hurt me, they're not worth doing. Yeah, They're just not. You know what I mean? Why would you ever risk injury? on something if it's not a necessity if you know my livelihood is is just about like how much i can deadlift right you know what i mean like it's it's quite important for me and like what i do so I, I can't risk getting hurt squatting even though i would much prefer to have you know bigger quads and glutes and shit and and to squat like yeah. if i if i wasn't doing this for a living i'd be squatting yeah. you know what i mean i'd squat all the time i love squats i used to squat multiple times a week and stuff and Honestly, I might even be better built for squats than deadlifts if, if you were ever actually to see me squat when my mobility is okay. Um, very short legs, very large stomach. Um, I can say pretty pretty upright even when I'm pretty forwards. You know what yeah. I mean? So um, I don't squat very often. And honestly, if, if anyone's getting hurt squatting and you know, I, if you're not a power lifter, it's, it's not important that you squat. Like, you don't have to. You yeah. know what I mean? Like do, do whatever yeah, works for you. We all talk you. about that often and we've mentioned it here on the podcast many times that we – we just suggest people do either other movements or do like a box squat or something like that. You know, yeah, just squat whatever works. or squat a little higher. You know, because mm-hmm, yeah. if you're again, if you're not going to compete as a power lifter, you're just looking for some of the reward of squatting. Right. So do some type of squat, but find what you can, what you can manage. Maybe you can only squat the safety squat bar or cambered bar, but find something that you can do. Yeah, no exercise is really a necessity to being big and strong. True. You know what I mean? Or staying injury free or looking good or anything. So why the uh, hook grip? What's that about? Hook grip. Um, you know, I have a. Uh, you know, I don't have a weak grip, but I'm told I have a weak grip by people that have stronger grips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been I've been called baby hands and shit. I, whatever. Um, basically, it just lets me hold on to just about anything. Right. Um, well, at least the heaviest weights I've ever tried. You know, I've not gotten too heavy, but um, I uh, I broke both my hands and uh, my pinkies don't really close right, and that has a lot to do mm-hmm. with grip strength. So um, hook grip kind of takes that out of it a little bit for me by getting a little more thumb in there, and. Um, you know, I've never been much of a mixed grip deadlifter. I, I tend to tear all the calluses on my hands versus hold on to anything. Right. And I've, I've watched enough other people deadlift with a mixed grip and talk to people who move to hook grip afterwards and how happy they are to know that it's just probably just not for me to go mixed grip all the uh, time. Give us a few favorite assistance exercises for deadlifts. Deadlift stance box squats, Romanian deadlifts with the form I use. There's tons of different ways to do them, right? Um, barbell Yates rows using lower back, barbell shrugs. We'll get video of all this for you guys. Chest supported rows, dumbbell <coughs> rows, glute ham raise, back extensions are a favorite. Um, probably the top four if I had to choose, let's say top five. Um, Romanian deadlifts, deadlift stance box squats, barbell Yates rows, back extensions, and glute ham raises. Deadlift stance box squats, meaning whatever stance you're going to use for your deadlift? Like yes. It could be a sumo or it could it, be a yeah, conventional? It, it might even work better with sumo than conventional, but it works incredible for conventional. And uh, just uh, at parallel, above parallel, doesn't matter too much about uh, you know, how low I, you go, I would imagine, because the you know, deadlift, I'm, you're not going to get hips that low. I'm, I never really recommend uh, people squat high in general. You know right. what I mean? Just because, just you know. Yeah. I, gu- I guess if they were really too tight, I'd be like, okay, you know, go ahead and squat a little bit higher. Right. I'd be more inclined to tell to work on mobility before they right. even tried. Um, so I would say, or so. yeah, I'd say parallel or even below. Um, you want to train the area 
below where your hips are, in my opinion. Because gotcha. if you notice, anyone, if you squat deep, you can squat high too and be yeah, strong. It's true. If of a you sticking, squat high, yeah. you can't squat deep. It's and true be of any sticking point as well. You want to go a little bit more range of motion than yeah. where your actual sticking point is. I, people get a lot more comfortable with their hips slow once they build up their strength and um, with their deadlift stance box squats. It's a very, um, a very good movement. I can't believe more people haven't tried it or done it. Um, I don't think I've had a single client that hasn't benefited from it, and I think I have everyone doing it unless they ask otherwise. What's your favorite song? Favorite song? Um, man, I don't listen to music that much anymore. <laughs> uh, maybe like... Um, hmm. I listen to stuff on like the radio, man. Um, <laughs> probably the song that I've listened to like the most over the years is like... Um, some like classical, like uh, like adagio for strings or something like that. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Um, Flight of the Birds or something. something Sounds like that. good to me. Flight of the Birds. Yeah, and that's what I played yesterday. It could be. It could be a little bit wrong. I usually just click on YouTube videos to be honest yeah. with you. So I like never know what's on. I yeah, never know what's on the radio. That, yeah, I'm just like that's that. that song I like. Yeah. Yeah, it's a song that just hits you a certain way. I used to really like Disturbed and that kind of thing, man. But you know what I found out. Like if you listen to it all the time, which I did, like it burns you out. Yeah. Like you can only stay so hype for like so long. You know what I mean? Like, and then it's just like, ah, uh, like it's not that cool anymore. You know what I mean? It's the same. Uh, like uh, favorite guy uh, movie or TV show? Either one. Uh, Breaking Bad um, mm. is is pretty awesome. Oh man! Again, I'm not that big into TV. Uh, movie Gladiator, um, that kind of thing. That's Maybe a good soundtrack. Uh, let's try something more. Like your speed. Favorite too. porn site? <laughs> oh, favorite porn site. You know, what I've been doing lately, man. I just, I just go to Google and like type in whatever I want to see. <laughs> I just take my pick from the best videos. Oh, that's got to look like a good search history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last thing you googled. <laughs> These search history pages are stuck together, which is actually physically impossible. <laughs> Digital pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I only know a few, anyways. Honestly, uh, like you porn or that's something. Great. <laughs> that's great. All right, man. Well, that's uh, George Lehman. The uh, the uh, heaviest deadlift of all time, 909-pound deadlift done in competition. Uh, he's a non-squatting pussy <laughs> and uh, can't bench press, but he knows how to deadlift. A uh, guy who's been through it all, uh, as you guys heard here today, uh, went through a tremendous uh, transformation both mentally and physically, and it's awesome to have you here on the show. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Multiply your hustle and multiply your muscle, and may all your shits be tapered. At Silent Mike with two Ks, Instagram and Twitter. I'm Jim McD, SCTV. That's Instagram and Twitter. Follow the show on Instagram at Mark Bell's Powercast, Facebook.com slash Super Training Gym, Twitter at ST Gym Sack. And we're out. Mark Bell's Powercast is a production of supertraining.com.